This tip changed the game for me, and it can for you too. Awesome. Now we all know the importance of thumbnail design, especially when you're trying to capture the attention or stand out with your images or design. But for some reason, this design tip never gets talked about, and it's made everything so much easier for me. And so regardless of what you might think about my thumbnail designs, you might like them or you might dislike them, give this tip a shot. And we'll be sharing a lot of prompts in this video too. Because it might just take your designs to the next level. This tactic is fire. And so throughout this whole entire video, I'll be sharing a ton of useful prompts for you to use, especially one of my favorites, an actual chat GPT prompt engineering generator. Simply copy and paste this prompt into chat GPT and you'll get a large variety of different styles of prompts you could use. Now, for example, if you take a look at my screen over here, here is the actual prompt that we're gonna use. For hundreds of other prompts, click the links in the description. If I go ahead and expand this prompt, you can see it's quite long, and I will include a link to this in my description. By copying and pasting this prompt in the ChatGPT, you're going to get a prompt for any of these characteristics that you choose. You could use these prompts in Midjourney, Leonardo AI, or any other AI prompt generating tool of your choice. Okay, so now let's go ahead and dive right into this prompt. Now, as you can see from my Airtable base over here, you can see that I went ahead and copied and pasted everything out of this prompt, and now I put this directly into ChatGPT. Now, once it's in the ChatGPT, it's gonna look like this. You just simply copy and paste it exactly how it is, and as you can see, I'm using GPT 3.5, and then right here where I'm highlighting, these are the actual commands you're gonna give it based on the characteristics that you want. So for example, if you want a prompt that's gonna have a scenery type look to it, you're gonna just simply type in slash scenery, and then right after scenery, you're gonna type in what you're looking for. So in this case, it would be slash scenery tropical beach. Same thing with logo, slash logo a neon owl. And so I'm gonna show you exactly what I did for a few of these. If you want to, which you don't have to, you see that I have these bracketed text for command one, command two, that stands for command. What this basically tells ChatGPT is, depending on how long you want your prompt to be, it will spit out the prompt in either a short, medium, or long form type prompt. If you don't give it any sort of command, it's just going to default to a medium length prompt. So after you paste it in, here are the results right here for a few of the ones that I added. It just basically says, yes, I understand. You want me to generate prompts for stable diffusion based image generator, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. And then all you have to do is just simply this. So you could see the very first prompt I said was just simply slash color burst. And then it gives me this prompt right here, a vivid color burst, like a rainbow powder dust explosion. Pretty cool. And you can see I did it again with product laptop. And I did another one with a documentary style attractive woman with a tear rolling down her cheek. So if you wanted to go ahead and just start from scratch, all you have to do is just simply do this. You would type in that slash command. And now in this case, I want to do the photorealistic one. So it would be slash and then photorealistic. You can leave this command option blank. If you do, like I said, it's going to default to a medium length prompt, but let's just say for an example, I'll you the comparison of the two. So if I'm going to do photorealistic and I'm going to do just a line and I'm going to have in the bracketed text long, right? That's all you have to do. Hit enter and then look what it gives you. So even though it's long, it's still not going to be too long to where it's going to eat up too many coins or credits depending on what AI tool you're using. And now this time I'll do short just so I can show you the difference. See, photorealistic portrayal of a rhino, high res details, lifelike textures. Nonetheless, this does a fantastic job generating thumbnail images for you based off the type of characteristic or look you're going for. Here are the ones it made for me so far. And so here we are with the color burst one. So you can see there's my color burst one. And then check out some of these documentary style ones I made of this woman who's a little bit tearful and, and sad. So it gives me exactly what I'm looking for. So in this case, at the end of this prompt, I did do the style raw command in mid-journey, but look at this here, it has the close-up shot, documentary style with the lighting, and then the tears rolling down her face. And then you can see that the same thing with this one here, and then also this one right here. This is actually one of my favorite prompts to use. I love this documentary style close-up shot. It does a fantastic job. So then I used a Fortnite description, and then here's what it gave me right here. And so you could see on this prompt right here, it says, dynamic rendering of a fierce and determined woman, warrior immersed in the world of Fortnite. And so that was the prompt for that one. And then you can see this one over here. This was just a much simpler prompt. And this is simply blonde woman portrait Fortnite background. And then here's also another one I did with the same gaming command 
and this time I used a supercar. So now let me show you how I'm really impressed with some of these in Leonardo AI. And so I used over here on ChatGPT, here is the one I used for a rhino, and I use this one that's just short right here, a photorealistic portrayal of a rhino, high res details, lifelike textures. Now the reason why I love using this so much in Leonardo AI is because once you use the Leonardo AI photo reel preset, your prompts don't need to be that long or detailed. And then look, here's what it generated for me right here with this rhino. This looks fantastic. And then I'll also go back to this one right here. Here's the second one it made for me again, short prompt, but using photo reel and Leonardo AI. And then again, I'll also share all these prompts too with the link in my description on my website. Now, what these prompts are going to actually do is that they're actually going to help you generate and create and come up with some pretty cool thumbnail ideas specifically for YouTube using chat GPT. And so this whole entire database contains about 1300 prompts, but I'll actually be including just these right here, the one specifically for the thumbnail. So just as an example, I'll come over here to chat GPT and I'll actually paste one of these prompts in. I want you to take the role of a YouTube expert, come all the way down here and then just put in what your video idea is. And I'll just put how to create thumbnails for YouTube. And then again, I'll do this one right here. Give me 10 ideas for fill in the topic theme thumbnail for my YouTube channel. I'll hit enter and then see what it can come up with here. And so quickly you can just see it gives me 10 designs very quickly. Now, before we get to the main tip that changed the game for me and really allowed my thumbnails to stand out much better than they were before is I want to share with you guys one of the best resources in my opinion that you should definitely try out. This is by far my favorite stock item tool. Pricing is incredibly affordable specifically because of everything that you get. You could do the usual way of searching but this is what I love to use. So let's just say I have this photo right here. So I can hit search by image and then just click and drag this same image in here and then within a the matter of seconds free pick is going to generate all of these images that look exactly like the one I just uploaded and I can download as many as I want and I could do search again and then get even more and so again how exactly say I wanted an image like this how exactly could I even describe this I mean it's possible I could describe it but it's so much easier just to click and drag it in here and you're gonna get some similar sort of design okay so now I want to show you the number one tip I use to create some of these thumbnails it's been a game changer for me it's made things so much easier and it kind of helped my images stand out a little bit more and what that's gonna be is utilizing the text effects. So here's what I mean by that. The cool thing about this is that when you have a text effect, you wanna use one of two tools. You wanna to use Photoshop or Illustrator. I'll show you exactly how and why this is important. So let's come over here and then in free pick, just type in the word text effect, okay? It's gonna allow every text effect to pop up. Now, you can also filter this down by on the left hand side, top left hand corner, I can filter it down to say, show me just PSD files only. So, this is only going to show me files that are going to be Photoshop files. If I prefer to use Photoshop, these are all going to be it. So let's just scroll down until we see something that we like. Let's just take this first one right here that says Beast, okay? If you want to use this in your thumbnail, go ahead and just hit download. So now download to your folder. We're going to leave that there for now. Now, we have that downloaded in my download folder. Okay, now we're over here in to Adobe Stock. Now just go and select all. Now do the same thing. Type in text effect and now hit enter. Now watch this. Now one thing to keep in mind about this is that when you do text effect, a lot of these text effects are going to be defaulted to Illustrator. Now this is so simple to do in Illustrator. Even if you don't know how to use Illustrator for anything else, anybody can learn how to do this. So let's just say over here in Adobe Stock, we like this text effect right here. Let's just go ahead. Now you could see I already downloaded this one. So I'm going to hit re-download for free. If I hadn't already done this, you would just select license. So let's go ahead and then re-download this one. And it's going to open up in default as a vector AI EPS file. Hit download. Now watch this. Once I hit download, it's going to automatically open it up into Adobe Illustrator. Okay, now check this out. Now once it's opened in Illustrator, this is so extremely easy. Obviously, we don't want the word movies on our thumbnail. We want the word design. All you have to do is just double click in this text box and then just simply type in the word design hit enter and now you changed up the word movie and now it says design. Obviously, we don't want this background or this sample text on here, so we want to remove this. On the top right hand corner, just go ahead and hit this expand button and expand the layer. Now what you want to do is just turn off this rectangle by selecting this eye right here. And then you want to make sure you remove the text. If I turn that rectangle on, you can't see the text. So leave the rectangle on for now and then just deselect this group to remove the text and then hit this other eye to remove that text. So now we have no text here. Now you can remove the background and then there you have it. Now, once this is done, now it's time to download this as a PNG transparent file. All you have to do is hit file, export as, 
make sure you have PNG selected and now go ahead and hit export and then OK. It's going to go ahead and save over to my downloads folder. So now once that's done, next is we're going to take our design process over to Canva where we're going to create all of our thumbnails for a blank slate. Let me first show you how to use this with the PSD file by utilizing free pick. I like this beast one right here that we looked at earlier. OK, all we have to do is just download this. So now all I'm going to do is just open this up in Photoshop. This is a text effect layer, but I want to obviously change up this text. So over here on the right hand side, you could see where it says edit text here. All you have to do is double click this in the layer on the right hand side. Double click this and it's going to bring up the actual text that says beast. Now one thing to keep in mind, I actually don't have this font. So that's why on the right hand side you see like this yellow exclamation mark hazard sign, okay? That's because I don't have this font downloaded in the Adobe stock. No problem. So make sure you have this layer clicked. Now just simply change the font to something else. So again, you can kind of scroll through these and look at something that might look similar or a completely different font. Say I like this one right here. Just select it and now on the right hand side that little exclamation yield sign goes away. Now we want to change up the word. We don't want beast to be in here so let's name something else. Now let's change this word up to thumbnails and then just shrink this down. I hit the shortcut command T on a Mac and now I'm going to go ahead and just make this a little bit smaller. Notice in the top tabs once I double clicked on edit text here it automatically opened up this tab. This is where I'm doing the actual editing of the text and replacing the word beast with thumbnails. Once once I have this text replaced, it used to say beast up here in the top left hand corner, hit file and hit save. Okay. You have to save it first. Once it's done saving, now go back to your first tab. Now look at this. Now the word says thumbnails. You've since replaced it from the word beast to thumbnails. Okay. Perfectly. And now you're going to do the same exact thing we did in Illustrator. You're going to come down here and then remove the background by deselecting that I. And now you want to remove the other thing where it says additional text. Okay, you remove that additional text. Everything looks good. Now it's time to go ahead and export this one. So once everything is deselected and selected on the right hand side that we want or don't want. Now let's go over here and go to file. Now the cool thing about Photoshop is I can go to file and go to export and it has already a quick export as PNG. Now let's go over to Canva and I'll show you exactly how to make this all turn out the exact way you want it to. And so now the first thing we want to do is go ahead and add everything that we just created. So I'm going to do that by just simply clicking and dragging everything over to this left hand column. If I click in here, say I don't want this badge to be in here. Say I like this, but I forgot to remove the badge. That's going to be no problem at all. Open up Photoshop again. Now this time remove the badge and now you have just the word thumbnails that you can actually go ahead and export. Let's just go ahead and select a cool background we want to use. Say we like this girl, but we don't want the actual background because we actually want to use this background that we downloaded. Okay, no problem. Click the image I'm on and hit edit photo in the top left hand corner and then just simply hit the background remover tool. BG remover. Watch how accurate this is. Look, just like that, it removes the complete background. And then now I'm going to add this background right here. Expand it to cover the whole page. But now the girl's blocked. Go to position and go to layers on the left hand side. And now I'm just going to click and drag the positioning of where I want each thing to be. So if I like this girl right here, that's cool. If I actually want her on the other side, it's not going to look right. So go ahead and go to flip and then flip horizontal. And now I have her on this side. And then I can expand her. That way her eyes are going to kind of be looking at the words. Now it's time to bring in our text effect that we made from earlier. Just click it one time. And now we have thumbnails in here. The other thing to keep in mind is that if you don't want this shadow on here, if I wanted just to re-upload this without this little shadow, that's easy to do too. What you would do is just go back over into Photoshop. And then again, over here on the right hand side, just expand all these different categories. And then you would just remove the shadow. So now the next thing what we're going to want to do is bring in the other one, design. Just click it once and now design is in here. Say we want to like blend some different things together. Say I want to use this galaxy background as well and kind of blend it in. Expand it to cover up the whole thumbnail. Go to position and now click and drag it right above the black background or vice versa. Okay. And then you can make this transparent and bring it down a little bit and you can have them kind of both blended in together. Or you can even do it with another image. Like if I like this big hologram right here, you can do the same thing. Go to position and then bring this one down. So I really didn't like the way that shadow was 
was looking in the thumbnails world. So I went ahead and went back to Photoshop and I actually did remove that shadow. And let's go ahead and put this new one in here instead. Now that looks much better. Okay, now check this one out. This is pretty cool too. I got two backgrounds here. I have the light bulb with the fluorescent tree in here. And then I have this, uh, the main background we were using. So same thing, just adjust the transparency. So I want this image here. I'm actually gonna flip it. Okay, so I have this brain over here on this side. Let me make this file a little bit smaller. You kind of want to have it to go over it. Okay, there we go. And then there you have it. So we kind of have two backgrounds blending in together. We have our two text effects. It's not perfect quite yet, but for the most part, just to kind of give you guys the idea of how I made this design, with these text effects, this is exactly how I did it. But hopefully this little tip can help you out in your thumbnail design process. Thank you so much for watching this video. And please don't forget to hit that subscribe button because you'll be the first to know when all these videos come out. But until then, we'll see you next time.